Let's begin. Hey there, Scary Story Fanatics! Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Bone, with your host, Sociopathic. Well, I may have gotten off track, but I seem to have found the trail, or at least that was before now, and I've only maybe lost myself to find... Wait, well, while I try to figure out what's going on, you can settle in for the retelling of a timeless classic that I like to call The Quick Sands of Time. I know where I am, fully aware of what I'm doing and that my presence has never marked this place, yet I feel as though I've been here before. Maybe it's because of my studies, my thirst for knowledge, and vivid interpretation of it that facilitated this feeling of déjà vu, but somehow it seems more than that. The hot, dry air blew across my face, against only minimal portions of still exposed skin, carrying with it tiny particles of sand that stung like hundreds of tiny bees as it whisked by. The weather was starting to get exponentially worse, and the gaping maw that awaited a few dozen yards before me was never imagined as so inviting. I would need the protection of its walls in order to wait out the desert storm. Not that I needed one, but this was all the more reason to hastily make my entrance. So, without any hesitation at all, I hurriedly trampled through the sandy expanse between I and the doorway until I had safely entered through its arched borders. I had made it. Despite all odds and the arguments of others, naysaying my intents, despite my losing my guides due to their superstitions and forcing me to go the extra few miles alone, yes, despite it all, I had found what I was sure to be the Aetis Tempora, an ancient shrine built to worship gods of time, or so it is believed. The place left undiscovered, one of the true, final few explorations left open for the discoveries of man. This place had remained hidden within the massive terrain known as the Sun Anvil, an inhospitable desert plain in which virtually no water or plant life exists for miles upon miles. The heat is more than deadly and few who have ventured out into it return to tell their tale. Covered by sand and obscured by rock, this temple resembled nothing more than a small cave entrance from the outside, its true visage only known by the inhabitants of a small nomad desert tribe with whom I finally had the fortune to locate and communicate with. It was apparent that their propositions were correct, because the interior lining of the sandstone walls boasted numerous hieroglyphs and depictions, most of which referred to these temporal gods of which I mentioned. This was it. I'd finally found it. Dirt and sand covered the majority of the floor. Most of the walls had become fissured and chipped with age. The ravages of time had notably taken its toll on this place. Each and every length of corridor offered only choices. Splits and forks, schisms in the floor revealing sublevels, 
orifices overhead beckoning discovery of the spaces revealed above. Small, inconspicuous, and ambiguous from its exterior, as the interior sprawled out above and below, the deeper within I went. An absolute labyrinth of vacant chambers and sandy corridors. Most individuals I knew, or even conceived of, would have undoubtedly endeavor to uncover all its secrets, explore its every mystery. But I was here with a purpose. Just as the hieroglyphic inscriptions that had survived the plunders of centuries past, my objectives were set in stone. To describe it now seems silly almost a bit too obscure to put accurately into words, but while crawling about the expansive bowels of this structure, I could almost feel my intuition pulling at me, tempting me to head off in one direction over another. As I am fully aware that I had never been here before, nor have I studied any document that presented such a depiction, I knew these feelings be the false prophets of my own desires, and my intellect begged me to investigate more obvious points of interest. It's one of those experiences you have to undergo to appreciate, but in smaller terms, I felt as though I was ignoring natural instincts and followed leads and passages that ended in nothing but either figurative or literal dead ends. My methodical inquisition yielded no results, and it finally seemed as though intuition was all I had left to fall back on. I don't know how long I spent walking, scanning, and mapping those halls and chambers, each desolate and either vacantly abandoned or raided decades prior leaving nearly nothing but the inscriptions along their sides in their wake. There had to be more to it all. It couldn't have been raided in its entirety. Deep within, and far below the surface level, I now followed my instincts, following the pathways of countless turns and twists, ending with a crawl space just large enough for me to slide myself into on my belly. Now, in contrast to my profession and the current circumstances, I'm deathly afraid of small enclosed spaces, moderately claustrophobic. At first, there was only the sounds of my breath and scuffled movement. But then, I could have sworn I detected a cacophony of voices, similar voices, each one of them seemingly mimicking my own. But the sound was almost incorporeal, not actually there, possibly a rendering of my own imagination or the spontaneous onset of dementia related to my current enclosed environment. Whatever it was, I listened for a moment, intently focused on the dark pit of a void before me, my ears pricked and scanning for anything detectable. And after hearing nothing more, I continued on, mostly just wanting to get the hell out of that coffin of a tunnel shaft. Then something stopped me dead in my tracks. Laying completely motionless in a state of mental disequilibrium. The noises I could explain away. But a breeze. A small gust. The movement of air down here was a relatively preposterous concept. As far as I knew, there were no ventilation shafts or other points of entrance. Something had blown the air back towards my face, like a large, hot breath pushing back my hair in its wake. 
The conflict with my rationality caused me pause, but just as before, I was too determined to go back now. I was intent on finding it. Dirt and dust fell before me on either side, creating a cloud in the darkness that could only be tasted and not seen, at least until I scuttled out with a clamor, reoriented my bearings, and shined my light around in the darkness, revealing the thick accumulation of airborne particles that resulted in the bad taste in my mouth. It actually took me a moment to find the inscriptions that I had been looking for, even though they were only a few feet away, as the cloud proved thick enough to obscure sight and demanded that I give it time to settle. Even once I did notice, an exhilaration building up inside of me, I still shined the beam across the rest of the chamber, searching for any possible ventilation. Nothing. Nothing to account for that breeze, and I was sure that I didn't imagine it. So, I found myself with an impossible question to answer, but my previous discovery demanded my immediate attention. The doorway. The goddamn doorway to what had been dubbed the Penumbra Chamber. I'd finally found it. It was said to be the keeper of a sacred object, a relic said to have strange inherent powers that commanded time itself. They all said I was a fool. They all said that it was only a myth passed down by generations, but again, they all said this whole place didn't exist either. With every passing breath, I proved them more and more wrong. The crowning jewel of my expedition would be the Manu Day. Magical or not, the attainment of this item would insert a previously overlooked chapter into history. I would get the notoriety I so desperately desired. So I pushed, I shoved with all my might, every ounce of strength that I could possibly muster, and just as I was about to dub my attempts futile and give up, the stone door budged ever so slightly. I intensified my efforts, the sensation of acid running through my veins and arms, and when I thought I wouldn't be able to keep it up anymore. The whole thing slid back a few inches before toppling over with a loud boom, my momentum almost taking me down with it. Once again, after it had slammed into its resting position, a cloud of particles dispersed within the now open space before me, and my small beam of light proved useless once again in trying to penetrate it. But this time, I did not wait for it to settle. This time, my anxiety and the thrill took over me, and I found myself slowly walking through a glowing fog that was nearly thick enough to conceal my outstretched hand in front of my face. And that's when I saw it. A flicker of light somewhere in the dense population of particles in front of me, only a few feet away now. A glimmer, almost like something reflecting light back at me desperately trying to alert me to its presence in the hidden, now settling dust cloud. I proceeded onward, and as my proximity to it and the density of the cloud both decreased, I saw it, sitting there atop a stone pedestal. I grew closer to it, now inspecting it and my surroundings very closely. No sign of booby traps. I thought to myself, nearly chuckling as movies about adventurous archaeologists came to mind. Convinced of my safety, I reached forward and grabbed the object that I so desperately desired. I know where I am, fully aware of what I'm doing and that my presence has never marked this place. Yet, somehow, I feel as though I've been here before. Maybe it's because of my studies, my thirst for knowledge, and vivid interpretation of it that facilitated this feeling of deja vu, but 
somehow, it seems more than that. Well, if you can't get to where you're going, let's just hope you don't end up back to where you began. Well, that is unless you're tuning in next weekend for some more madness and mayhem. But until then, remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs>